Hi, I'm Sandy Alnock with Operation Right Home, and I'm here with your vlog, Two Things and a Before and After Card Share. Number one is some of the do's of Operation Right Home. The very first do is to do your very best work. We have heard that sometimes our cards are the final communication a family receives from their hero before he's lost on the battlefront. And we want these cards to stand the test of time. So we need to use our very best adhesives, no glue sticks. We need to make sure we use good cardstock, do our best stamping, our best embellishing, because our heroes are worth it. Consider your card potentially scrapbook material for generations to come. Another do is to stamp your cards with Operation Write Home on the back. You can see I have stamped this one with the free stamp that we have available on our website on the free tab. I've also put my name and my hometown on it. Another do is tucking the cards in the envelopes. And at Operation Write Home we have a special way to keep them together so our heroes end up with an envelope when they also have a card in their hand. And so what we do is we fold the flap of the envelope backwards, we tuck the, the back of the card into the envelope like so and then the front covers the flap of the envelope so then that flap doesn't catch on anything the adhesive doesn't stick to anything if your card is one of those that is folded the long way so if it opens this direction instead of horizontally then it goes all the way inside the envelope like that and while I'm talking about envelopes, we have a special deal for you if you wish to purchase them from Heinrich Envelopes. They sell the A2 envelopes, which is the only size card we request that you make. Available with a coupon code from our website, so you can go to the fundraising section, look for the shopping page, and there's a link to the exact envelopes that we recommend. Number two is the don'ts of Operation Right Home card making. And that includes glitter as the primary culprit. It's a really, really dangerous thing for our heroes. If it gets on their uniforms, it can make them visible to night vision goggles, so we will not send any glitter. You can use a little bit of stickles as long as it stays put on the card. You can also use bling and brads and other shiny objects, just nothing that's going to flake off onto their uniforms and make them visible. Another restriction is not to hand write sentiments onto the card. You may not have sentiment stamps or stickers to use, and it's perfectly okay to leave the card with no sentiment on it at all. The reason for this is that we've had some military wives who expected a letter from their husband and yet saw a woman's handwriting as the first thing when they opened that envelope. Now we don't want to give one woman even a second's pause wondering about the fidelity of her husband while he is deployed Therefore, we will not send any cards with handwritten sentiments on the front. If you wish to handwrite something, however, we do send hero mail, and that is any kind of card, store-bought or handmade, a piece of stationery, and write a letter to a hero. In each box, we send a packet of these Any Hero letters from adults and children across the nation. And now that we're on to children, we ask that children only make Any Hero cards, not the kind for the guys to send home, but the kind that they can hang up and enjoy. They love to post those letters from children and their drawings. Children, the only restriction you have is no glitter. Go crazy with your artwork. Now I want to go to the before and after segment of this vlog. We did some before and afters a while back and they were very, very popular. If you'd like to see the whole gallery of before and after cards, it's on our welcome page. So all of you newbies, you might want to take a peek at it because it's got some great tips in there for all of us at all levels of our card making. Our heroes love to send mail to their kids, absolutely. However, the cards should not look like they're made by children. Remember that the cards are being selected by adults. So if you make a card like this one, um, it kind of looks like it's been made by a child. Now, these before and afters are all made by me. I would never put anyone's card up here and say, don't make a card like this. Um, but on a card like this one in particular, it would not necessarily be selected by an adult, even though a child might actually run up to it and hug it. <laughs> we want to make cards that our heroes, the adults, are going to be attracted to, to send to their children. The after card for this one has the pattern paper added to the card. This is by Echo Park. 
the border stickers are gathered together and layered on a piece of black cardstock. There's a little frame created for the sticker itself, so you actually see the cute little panda bear. There's some elements added to it, like the pearl pen. You can use bling or brads in that place as well, and a little sentiment added. And if you look on the inside, this card is made on dark cardstock, so it has to have a liner added to it. And I've also chosen to add a little gorilla as a little extra fun on the inside. Now another tip is the more product you put on a card does not always make it better. This card in particular you can see has a lot of stuff on it. It has these gorgeous stickers from Basic Gray, but it's kind of haphazardly put together, bling added to it, it's kind of random. So I wanted to use that set of stickers to create an after card. I used my embossing folder and created a background with a little texture to it. I popped the sentiment sticker and so it's on a little bit of dimension. I cut the front of the card just a little bit short and added the sticker border so that it adds a little interest to the edge of the card. The little embellishments are also from the sticker pack. I added a piece of twine to the button and a little pearl to the center of the flower. The inside of this card is also decorated and has just a little strip of that same embossed paper and the corners are rounded for a little added interest. Now this next card has stamp sneeze on it. Stamp sneeze is when it looks like things were kind of achoo wherever they landed. And that's kind of what I did here on this one. The stamping's not so good. It's not very even. The stamps are crooked. And there's just not a lot of love poured into this card. This next card was improved drastically by the use of a sketch. There are three strips of various sizes going across the card in the sketch. And so I used three different pieces of We Are Memory Keepers pattern paper. I put a border of red around the image and around the pattern papers and around the sentiments. And that ties the whole card together much more. Now this next one, I want to show you what black can do. And this is where contrast really makes a big difference on a card. You can see that this one has simpler patterns. There's a red with a little bit of yellow, and then the same yellow is in the banner piece. The black around everything really strengthens the design itself and emphasizes it. There's two corners rounded instead of having squared corners, and it just adds a really, really unique feel to it. I added a piece of ribbon around that banner piece and a layer behind the sentiment. You can also see the chicken has a little more depth in the coloring. So those of you who love to color, rock on with your very, very best coloring. Well, those are a few before and afters I wanted to share with you and I hope they were helpful to you. Please visit the gallery on the newbies page and check out more of them. Thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this video. Feel free to click the subscribe button above, the like button in the corner, leave a comment down below. There's links in the doobly-doo as well to the pages that I referred to in this video. And we'll see you next time. Keep those cards and letters coming.